Welcome to Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast, where as your host each and every week, I am going to inspire you and empower you to share your message and step into that big vision you see for yourself. I'll be bringing you celebrity interviews, influencer insights, and my personal tips from decades as an on-camera talent, TV host, media expert, and entrepreneur, so you can build a brilliant seven-figure brand. Because when you're inspired, you inspire others. So let's go. If you're an entrepreneur, a small business owner, someone who is determined to show up more powerfully online, you've probably heard how important it is to master your message. And yet, for so many of us, we don't know what in the world that means. What is a message? How do you get it out there? How do you build an audience? So today, I brought on my head messaging coach and our Inspired Living producer, Elizabeth Walker. Now, Elizabeth Walker, oh my gosh, she is such an amazing woman and she has been really the catalyst for so many of our clients to step into their message and share it more powerfully. She comes to us with over 20 years of network producer experience from networks like Stars, Showtime, HGTV. She also has over 30 years of personal development experience. And what I love about that combination is that when it comes to working with our clients, those people who are committed to truly making the impact that they know they're here to make, a lot of it is mindset and helping them get clear on the conversation between the ears before they can share the conversation from their mouth. So again, on this episode, we talk about the four channels of our signature broadcast your brilliance program we talk about what it means to have a message how do you start cultivating and sharing and creating that message and i love that we actually dove into collaboration over competition elizabeth came to us as a client and then came to me with an idea and here we are with a program that has truly built inspired living to new heights over the last year and a half it's become one of our signature programs and it has transformed hundreds and soon thousands of lives. So if you're in a place right now where you're not sure how to get your message out there, you're not really sure how to craft your message, and you are committed to broadcasting your brilliance, this Inspired Living episode is for you. Well, this is a treat, Miss Elizabeth Walker, aka Inspired Living Mama Bear, right? Elizabeth Walker. So it's not often that I get to bring on one of my team members onto the podcast, and Elizabeth You have such an amazing background in network television and personal development. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about messaging and why that's so important. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I think I might be the first team member to hit the podcast. So I first and not the last, because I will say the inspired living team is pretty darn amazing and we need to highlight more of you. Um, but let's go back, Elizabeth, let's go back into time and talk about how we actually connected in the first place. Cause it kind of goes back to messaging. Uh, yes. Yes, it does. So I was an entrepreneur at the time and I was about four years in my business, you know, helping everybody, of course. <laughs> um, but just starting to understand what niching down meant and understanding message, but you were on stage where I was and there you are. And I'm in the audience going, "Mm -hmm, uh mm uh-huh, uh-huh, like speaking right to me. And you were so laser. And I was like, all right, I got to sign up for whatever you're offering. I got to do whatever you're doing. And it was about video. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding. Now I agreed with you because it was all about authenticity, but I'm like, okay. So I'm learning business, but now I have to learn video. Are you kidding? Another thing? Really? Yeah. Yes. Another thing. But we did. We ended up sharing a cab back, you know, to the airport and we had this entertainment connection because of course, as we know, right, you're the TV veteran and I was the ultimate behind the scenes producer, right? Working at network television, but I had obviously gone into my own business and, you know, I was like, we had the same entertainment company connection, right? You had been auditioning at the time. And I was like, oh yeah, I worked for them. And so, yes. So you really at first taxi ride. Yes. 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 (laughs) And I remember at that time thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you would bring so much value. And then you actually went through it factor as well. And I have to say, looking back, quite a few of our team members have come from coming to the two day on camera training, you know, that we've done now for over a decade and being in network production and helping so many people with their message. What did you find was the greatest obstacle? 
Well, number one, it's, it's visibility, right? I mean, we're not used to being on camera, many of us, right? And I, and I like to say, you know, there was not a camera in my crib, maybe for your kids now, right? The camera's there, but there wasn't a camera in my crib. And so at a certain age point, there's this visibility cloak, right? And, and it's like, don't be seen, don't be heard, right? That's the messaging that we had. But when it comes to getting on video, everybody says, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know what to say. And often they don't because they don't know who they're talking to. A thousand percent. You know, it's so funny, Elizabeth. I know we both have children, but, you know, looking at my daughter who's six right now with a camera in front of her face all the time because, you know, her mom's a little obsessive, (laughs) Um, you know, and thinking about how comfortable she is. And she's like, mom, I want to start my own YouTube channel and all of these things where women that we work with primarily 40 and up, it was a completely different conversation growing up. You know, it was the don't be too loud, don't be too visible. So even in corporate, I think we're told that a lot of our clients have come into us from corporate. And when we tell them, this is amazing, we love your idea, and you need to be on camera consistently, the usual response is not like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. (laughs) Right, exactly. Yeah, my son wanted to do a YouTube channel, got all the equipment. I'm like, good for you. Like, there's no block there. There's no block, right? So refreshing. But I will say, you know, I had to go to your two-day training, right? I mean, you're not the only one in the industry offering what you offer. However, you are one of the brightest souls that I know. And having been in television and meeting not so great people, and of course, meeting great people, I was like, okay, I got to learn from this woman and she's going to hold my hand. I wouldn't do it any other way. And you held my hand. Oh, and, and now you get to I hold get... everyone else's. <laughs> right, right, yeah. exactly. And yeah. it's like, you got this and, you know, but again, you helped with messaging, mm-hmm. right? And, and that's yeah. it. As soon as we could tap into our ideal client and speak right to them, look through the lens, but most of all, be ourselves. I, you know, they shoved me, my second job in TV, they shoved me in front of the camera. And I was like, that is not on my job description. Come on. <laughs> like, right? where is this found on the page? Yes. Right. Not and I'm like, yeah. at the largest cable company in the world, I'm third down from John Malone, the media mogul. And I'm wow. working on messaging for the executives. And they're like, yeah, you know, all those shows you're producing at the network, right? We had a closed circuit network. And I said, yeah, we'll get on camera. And I'm like, oh, come on. And so that piece of, I thought I had to be perfect. I thought I had to look like the anchors I would replace and read the prompter and look the part, but I never had training. And when you came along, it was like, oh, Mm -hmm. I just got to be myself. Now, now we're talking. Now you had, you had me at hello. So, (laughs) (laughs) you know, what I love about our story too, is that you know, as women in business and we were helping you grow your business and I never forget you came to me and said, Carrie, you know what? I'm kind of changing gears and this is what I want to do. And it was like, I can go do it with you or I can do it on my own. Let me know. And I'm like, Oh, come on board girl. Come on. And this is where collaboration versus competition, I think really comes into play. And I think as we start to morph into this greater space online and there's enough room for everyone. And so many of our team members are brilliant entrepreneurs, leaders who find themselves missing team right? Like feeling lonely. And I think that you deal with a lot of people in that entrepreneurial space. And I think with women, really understanding collaboration over competition is something that we can all embrace. Yeah. And I want people to know this because people like my friends and peers, colleagues, they thought I was crazy because I came to you, right? And and I was already in a niche. I was already making the $10,000 months. And My then husband at the time had a stroke at 47 and my whole world spun. And I just was like, all right, we got to come back to base. We got to figure out the family. And what happened was this idea started bubbling. And like you said, I could do it by myself or I could do it with you. And there was that moment that I remember so clearly where I was. And when you said, I, I love this. I've always wanted to have this kind of program. And there's that moment between you're my mentor, right? And here's the mentor going, amazing idea, pause, and you helped develop it and bring things to the table I never thought. And you did it with grace, 
You absolutely said, great. You know, if you can help me develop it, let's do it together. And not everybody, not every mentor, not every seven figure business owner in the coaching industry would do that. No, and well, I want you. people but to I know that. That's you brought huge. a lot to the table though, Elizabeth. I, and here's what I love so much is that, you know, I think as women in business, we know what we're good at. And when you start seeing someone that maybe can bring something else to the table or has the same ideal client, right? We kind of start freaking out like, oh my gosh, I don't want them to go to her. And I know absolutely that you could build it on your own, but I also had been in business a lot longer and brought things to the table that you didn't have yet. And this is where that collaboration piece, when we really co-created Broadcast Your Brilliance, which is now our signature program at Inspired Living. I mean, you've got to be so proud too of really being a part of something that has taken the company to new heights. Yeah. And that, you know, that was beyond my dream. Really. I mean, it was like, I, I have knew, chills right now, by the way, I'm all like, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I knew we both knew that people needed to broadcast in these different capacities as an entrepreneur and rise to the top to be seen. And yet they're going to do it fighting. So how can we create a program where they're like, okay, <laughs> you can hold my hand and get me on these channels and I won't cry. And so the <laughs> fact that we changed so many lives during the pandemic, yeah. when everybody had to get online and be visible, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's like divine guidance. I'm like, Thank it was you. divine timing. I mean, when yeah. you think about preparation meets opportunity, you know, it's not this content, especially the video side of it isn't new. We've been teaching it as a company for over 10 years, but the format was different. And I remember, you know, Carrie, you need to get more visible, not more visible in, in the video space, but like in the teaching space online. And I resisted it because everyone else was doing it. And look at how it transformed our model. We had one of the best years we ever had. We've served more people than we've ever served. You have more of a workload than you've ever had, but you also have a lot of success stories. So share with us, Elizabeth, when people come in to broadcast your brilliance, where they're at and where they end up. Yeah. So a lot of them, you know, they're really good at what they do. It's not about talent, right? They have the talent, the gifts, they've been helping clients and their clients love them, but it's a minimal amount of clients or more clients can't find them. And they, as we say, they are the best kept secret. Yeah. And so when Which they come so to us, frustrating. <laughs> like, why? Right? Yes. Yeah. And I was there too. I remember that pain of like, I know I'm good at what I'm doing, but no one can find me. And yes. so when they come to us, they maybe tried a little bit of visibility and video. They haven't, you know, pitched to the media, social media, they kind of tried, but they are not getting traction. That's where they start. That's where they yep. start. Yeah. And it brings me back to those kind of like four foundational C's that we have, which is really creating that emotional connection, which is the very first thing you do with them with the messaging. Because even when people feel like they think they know their message, I tell you what, the DMs and emails I get after one session with you, Elizabeth, is always like, oh my gosh, like life transformed, business transformed because you help them in literally 60 minutes, drill down, find a way to monetize what they're doing and get really confident behind what they're saying, which is such a gift. You have such a gift to do that. Where do you think that came from? Was it well, the network I, television or have you always kind of had that ability? Yeah, well, it's, it's both, right? I was 20 years in television as a successful producer and, you know, being at that network level, I can't tell you how many people at parties would be like, oh, you're in TV. I have this idea. I'm like, okay, Here we go. <laughs> you know, yeah. get and, me and, a cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just then go get me a drink and we'll talk. And then right. it's like, who's the audience, right? We learned that, you know, in, in my degree, I learned that who's your audience. And it was, they never knew. So right. one, it was just over time Two, when you're at the network level, you are so focused on that ideal audience member. And if Sally didn't like it, then it wasn't going to fly with a network. But I will say what I bring to the table is the ability to, in a way, be an empath and mm -hmm. feel into our clients in a way that says, okay, right? Do you want to help Sally, you know, in her help, or do you want to help Susie in business? And we try on lots of different messages, especially when they're like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I can feel it in them where they're like, 
okay, let's talk about you as a business coach and their whole energy just shrinks. And, and I know you see it too, Carrie Yeah. and their energy shrinks. But when we actually try on that message is like, ah, yes, I want to help in the health category. Woo. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. So it is, it's it's being at the network and just knowing people and what they prefer. Well, you've had so much experience with that now, both in the network level and in this online entrepreneurial space. And even today on one of the coaching sessions that I had with our clients, it was Carrie, you know, do I have to leave this part of me out? You know, and I said, no, I actually think it's really important that you know who you're talking to and if she's spiritual be spiritual if you know be you because i think that there's so much content i mean more content than we've ever had and we will only have more content coming you know at us and so understanding like where you come into the space how you're different what your core values are how you speak to that ideal client which is all the things that you help them with throughout the broadcast your brilliance program yeah Yeah. And I know what you're talking about where, you know, someone's in a very, you know, they're in a financial space, a very left brain linear industry. And this person wants to express their spirituality. And that is the biggest mistake of, I have to hold that back. Now I'm not going to, you're not going to lead with it. Hi, right. I'm very spiritual. Nice to meet you. And I can manage your money. Like, wait, what? No. Right. But her being her, right? Even her just wearing a necklace, I can tell she's different. And her getting more on video and talking about her values and her love and her story of how she came to be more spiritual, that's what's really going to shine. So when I say, okay, you're going to be this kind of coach, or you want to be this kind of person or an interior decorator or stylist, doesn't matter. But you still bring all of you to the table, like you just said. All of you. And I think that with all the people that are online, when you try to mute or censor like your beliefs, your core values, and I'm not saying, I know we don't, we don't preach tech, you know, talk about politics and religion and all those things. But I think at some point, you know, if that's a part of your message and a part of who you are, it's up to you to put it out there. You know, I feel like people are looking for like-minded people, you know, with all the diversity and attention, and all the things that are going on in the world right now, we're looking for people that feel like us, look like us, sound like us in a way, not, not, not aesthetically. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking like from the soul level, from a core value level. Yeah, absolutely. And when we can see ourselves in the person talking, right? I know many of our clients, right, Carrie, they fall in love with you because you're authentic mm-hmm. and we see who you are and you let that out. You talk about your kids. You talked about maybe this failure in business at one time, like you lay it out and we see ourselves. We want to be not like you, but to be, have that essence, that confidence that you exude. And and so many people love that. Mm, I love it. It's funny because the older I get, the less I seem to care what other people think. (laughs) And the more I step into who I am, and I think that's part of being an entrepreneur, part of being a mom, part of going through so many ups and downs is that, you know, at some point you just give yourself permission to show up and you'll attract the right people and, you know, you'll repel the people that aren't right for you. And I think as a woman, that's one of the hardest things is what will people say about me? Yeah, please. I got to please everybody. And that's, and, and I can see that in our sessions where it's like, okay, We just need the front door, the marketing message to get them in the door. And all of a sudden you see this shrinking happen because it's like, but what about this piece? And what about that piece and this piece? But ultimately I say, once you're in the door, you know, talk about anything that you feel is important to talk about and people will still be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe, right? We have our divinely assigned people in the world, right? These people are mine. They, these people are yours. There's plenty right. to go That's around. That's why there's no competition because the right people will find, will find you if I think you're being authentic and transparent online. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and we can feel when they're holding back, right? So mm-hmm. when you share what you do, it's a marketing message. It's meant to drive people into your soul, right? Into yeah. your into your essence and your community that is yours and only yours. But when you say like, well, I just have to say it like this. It's like, that's just a part of it. That's just, you know, you're just kind of tooting the horn. Like you say, right. You're tooting the horn going, come on over, come Mm -hmm. on over. But once they're over here, it's like, 
hello, here's the buffet that I offer. Tell and now them what we they get want, talking. give them what they need, right? Tell them yeah. what they want, give them what they need. And yeah. I think that's something that we can all just kind of remember in our marketing messaging is what does my ideal client think they want? You know, we talk that surface versus core. We think we want this, but what we really want, like we teach, you know, we think we want visibility and to be on video, but what we really want is value, contribution, impact, you know? Yeah. So it's so much deeper. And I love that you brought that to the surface. What are some of the success stories? Like what has been your favorite throughout Broadcast Your Brilliance that you have seen over the last year? So many. I mean, we've got one gal right now that, which I've shared before where, you know, she wants to like even hide on Zoom, right? Even in a Zoom <laughs> meeting, you know, she's like, you don't realize I just never had my, I always closed my Zoom window. Like it's a big deal that people are seeing me on Zoom and she is out on Instagram. She is crazy goofy in a good way on doing reels. Yeah. Right. And we're all laughing like this woman just blossomed, you know, and those are some of my favorites of the people that really dig their heels in right from the very beginning. Right. And this woman I'm talking about, you know, she's helping in the holistic health arena. Another woman is a realtor and she's like, nope, I'm not going to niche. Nope, not going to do it. And they almost have the biggest breakthroughs. By right. the end of the program, it's like, oh, I see what you're talking about. And then when people start to reach out online, they're feeling the love, they're getting the followers, they're getting the buyers. Those are, you know, we have so many of those, but those people that really resisted the messaging, getting on camera, doing social media, and then we watch them and we right. watch them have so much fun, right? So like you've great. been on calls where it's like, I hate video. <laughs> right. It's like, nope, I'm not doing it. it. I don't want to do it. it. I hate it. And, and I get it. I, you know, it, it was like, okay, so I have to use this camera to reach my people. Okay. You know, it's kind of like, I have to clean my house to have a party. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to clean my house, but I have to, I want the party. People are yep. coming over. So, I like you know, analogy. they begin to embrace video and for all of a sudden they'll be like the same woman. She's like, I actually like it. Yeah. I actually am starting to love being on video. And so those are really fun. The harder they dig in, again, biggest breakthroughs. I think that the shift really starts when our clients understand that video is really not about you. When they come in, it's all about them, not in a bad way. Like this isn't like, oh my gosh, it's all about you sort sort of ego thing. But that's all as humans with an ego. It's all we think about when we don't know better is, oh my gosh, do I sound okay? Do I look okay? I look too old. I look too young. I look too fat. I look too thin. I'm not ready yet. But when they work with you and they work with the Inspired Living team on understanding the concept that video is just a conduit, it's just a lens that gets you to your person quicker, then I feel like, like oh my gosh, I get it now. I won't say that you stop worrying so much about what you look like but when you're really connected to that one person, you stop thinking about you. And I think those are some of the ahas that we have seen with our clients as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I say that out of the gate. It's like, you know, and you do too. I want you to drop in, look through the lens, right? You talk to the one person, but I like to add, but I want you to see them in their, in their struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Because we buy, as you say, right, we buy quicker to alleviate a pain. Yeah. They are sitting there struggling, waiting for you to show up on in their feed, yeah. you know? And so when we can really drop in and connect to that person and that pain and speak right to it, we were just doing that at the event, having people speak into the pain yeah. of their client, everybody the in the room was like it. silent. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. silent. Cause they're like, even though they're not the client, the ideal client, we're like, Oh, she's speaking right to that person. Yeah. And, and it's a ripple effect of, and that's how we reach them, right? That's how we reach is really just not talking to talk, to talk and to talk about anything. Please don't. Just smile more. No, <laughs> right. don't. Just and I will say that exercise was so much fun. And, you know, for you that's listening right now or watching, I want you to think about when it comes to your messaging, if you just started with really understanding who you were talking to, that one person, you dropped into your heart and you started speaking into their pain, speaking into their possibility, your videos would be amazing. I mean, we saw that with a one minute quick flip of the switch with the coaching on stage at Brilliant and the whole room, like you said, 
it was like mic drop. The room was quiet because they were so drawn in. And yeah. so if you're in a place right now where you're thinking, I don't know my message. I don't know where to start with my message. Elizabeth, what would you say? What, what is the one thing that they should start with? Yeah. So it goes back to who are you talking to, right? Who is your favorite client to work with? That if you could have 50 of them all the time, right? They're not the criers or the whiners. They're your favorite people. Then that's a place to start to make sure because everybody's like, well, I kind of want to work with this person. It's like, but are they your favorite? Yeah. All right. So start with who is your favorite? And then what is the problem they have that you like to solve? Don't Mm -hmm. solve a problem they have if you don't even care about it or it just doesn't light you up. Yeah. So again, who Love is that. it? What is the problem? And they and have then, to know they have the problem because sometimes you yeah. know, we get with clients and they're like, this is your problem, but the ideal client doesn't know that it's Correct. their problem. So exactly. now we're trying to force them to get into a pain state. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's where I say, but what's the problem they know they have the client, what's mm-hmm. the problem the client knows they have that is just in their head and what are they complaining about to their best friend? Right. And when our clients come in and they go, well, I think it's this. And I'm like, nope, it's a too big a word. You know, I don't go to my best friend and say, you know, well, I wish I could really fix this autoimmune disorder. No, I, I go and I go, oh my gosh, the brain fog or the bloat. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm tired, like, all of that. Yeah. 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 So really watching who you're talking to, what's the pain? Do you want to solve that? And then finding the language that they use, that they're using to complain to their best friend. And often it's an older version of yourself that you've been through, or you can at least relate. Identify with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think going back to simplify, simplify, right? And we've heard maybe if you've worked with other marketing consultants or people in the branding space, they will say things like dumb it down. You know, you want to speak to the fifth grader and not in a way that is at all shaming your listener, but so many times we speak so lofty, like we were speaking so above where they're at at the moment. And they're just like, I'm just in pain. Like it just hurts. Like, can you just get rid of the pain, please (laughs) tell me what to do. Yeah. I like to, you know, in working with someone recently, you know, it's kind of like how we, if you have children, you're so close to your children. And when you describe them, it's like, oh, they're so light and airy and, I don't know. They just have this energy about them, but your friends will come in and say, oh, they're smart and funny. Right. So when we, when it's our own message and we just have all these lofty, sometimes esoteric words to describe our deep work, you just need someone on the outside to say, let's just kind of make it simple. Like you said, simple. Let's drill that sucker down. Let's get, let's get niche. So let's talk a little bit more about Broadcast Your Brilliance. It's something that we co-created in the last, gosh, year and a half now. And we've had now hundreds of clients go through it. Break down the four pillars for us. Like, what do you learn and who is it for? We talked a little bit about that, but give me a little more. Yeah, yeah. So again, you know, a lot of the folks that come through Broadcast Your Brilliance, again, best kept secret. They've been in business, you know, maybe even two to three years, sometimes 10, right? But really that three-year spot where they've given, they've got this gift, this momentum that's happening, but again, they're not online, right? They're, and they're, no and if they are, yeah, we can't find them and there's no traction. And by so, the way, by the way, I just want to say, if we can't find you, business isn't coming. I'm stating the obvious, I know, but I'm, just, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, and they're, they're smart women, they're conscious women, and they truly care about making a difference. That's who they are. They're truly caring, mostly women, but we do help a few men, of course. And they care about making a difference, making that income to give back to the causes they believe in and the impact. Like we all believe, like let's pay ourselves first, right? So we can pay others. And, but really we start with video, right? There's four channels and we start all about video, how to show up with presence, what to say, not about perfection right? But really messaging and how to utilize your signature, Carrie, your signature five types of videos. Yes, there are five. So we (laughs) are practicing. We're practicing all five except for one because your client's going to do that one. But we are practicing step by step by step. We don't throw you into the the Roman 
Coliseum <laughs> out of the game. And go. Well, what's so great too is that the private Facebook group where you and the other coaches are in there giving like real time feedback on messages and video. I don't know, and maybe I'm just not looking around as much of any other program out there where you're learning, implementing, getting feedback, learning, implementing, getting feedback at the level of expertise that you and Amy and Kelly Day and our other coaches can bring to the table. I think that's awesome. Because how yeah. many times do we go live or we do a video and we're like, is that any good? Did anyone uh -huh. get that? You know? Yeah. And, and here and you we... have a safe place though, super safe, because everyone feels the same way. Everyone's scared. Everyone's <laughs> not certain or sure about what they're saying. So to have that little place that you can go to and practice, I think is just incredible. And it's a lifetime ROI for them. Yeah. Yeah. And what's fun is like, okay, now you're ready to post. Okay. Now you're like, okay, we got the background dialed in. we got your messaging. You're getting yeah, comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Now you go post and you know, we're putting all the li their lives in the group and it's like, nope, nope. Don't do this. Do this. Nope. Don't do that. Do this. But it's so loving, right? We always right. are respectful about the it. The velvet glove, <laughs> the velvet glove. But I just, yeah, I just had a, a, one of our gals. She's like, oh my gosh, I feel so seen. Like she did this wow. video and she's like, and I gave her all this feedback. She goes, I feel very seen. And you know, it's like a Best paragraph, thing. like lots yeah. of detail. Yeah. yeah. So once you're comfortable there, once, you know, in broadcast your brilliance, really comfortable here in front of the camera, getting comfortable, right? It takes maybe about 60 days to get yeah. there, but then we move into social because now you're posting, yes, your videos online, you're going live online, but there are so many social media strategies that our clients are like, I had no idea. And they've been on social media yeah. for years. Yeah. No idea, right? Optimizing the YouTube channel. There is a hashtag strategy. Yes, there is. Even There's a keywords. Strategy. Yes. Strategy, right? How to effectively do Facebook Live, IGTV. And honestly, what the heck do I post and when? Do I have to do a meme or do I have to do a quote? And am I on all channels or just there a few go. channels? I mean, I will say a lot right. of our clients, they try their hand at social, but then they feel so deflated and they're not getting the results. So then they just think it doesn't work. And I always love Bridget Brady's analogy when it's like drinking water. I laugh every single time. So I don't want to share it because I know at some point we'll have Bridget on and she'll talk about it. But it really is that, hey, I heard water is good for you. So I'm going to take one sip and be like, nope, didn't see the result. And that's kind of the same thing with socials. Like, hey, I tried it and it didn't really work. You know, I tried it once. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah. And so they're like, OK, you know, what does our expert Bridget Brady have to add? And all of a sudden they're like, oh, my gosh. Right. This in the strategy are just coming knows. out. Yeah. 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 So it's really fun to see people online and even like your banners for your platforms. It's like we're starting to do that in one of the groups. And it's like, there's no image of you. Where are you on your banner? Or it's, you know, as, as you like to say, Carrie, very lovingly, it looks like a toddler drew your social right. banner, right? <laughs> With so much love. Yes. With so much love. And so we're really about having you show up polished, produced, but not perfect. Yes. And then, so that third pillar is media attention, how to truly pitch to television, to radio and getting these news hook, which are you know, expert Kelly Day, Inspired Living's media coach, truly walks you through taking your niche and your message and what you do in as a living and breaking it down into a pitch that you send out, you rinse, repeat and send out to TV and radio. And every single person, there is room for you in traditional broadcast in, you know, online broadcast. There's so many outlets now, which, you know, it's just insane. There are so many outlets that are looking for experts and content creators and influencers. And so it's not like you need to hire a publicist anymore. You have it at your fingertips and we teach you exactly how, like how to set up the pitch, how to speak in sound bites. I know Kelly practices the interview because a lot of people don't know how to be interviewed. That's a skill too. So obviously I love that part because TV and media was one of the ways I grew inspired living to where it is. And I think it's something that is right there that most people never really grasp. So it's exciting to teach that. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of entrepreneurs that come to us, they're like, I didn't think I was important enough to be on the news, wow. yeah. you know, and, and they do. And that's a huge thing. And it's like, they really get their value. It's like, oh no, have you seen some of the interviews? They haven't had media coaching <laughs> like you have. No, and they have you, not. Yeah. No, they haven't. And not just that, but 
everyone that goes, everyone out as an entrepreneur, if you're really wanting to make that impact and income, you all have value, yeah. right? You all have value. So absolutely, you belong on TV and radio. Yes, you and you and you and you, yeah. right? It's so called crowning yourself the expert. No one's going to do go. it for you. You got to put that crown on your own head and go out there and share your expertise, um, yeah. which, you know, again, it's amazing how many people are scouted and found on YouTube these days, you know? So if you're consistent with your messaging, people will find you. You know, and it really is wonderful for the media to see that because then they know that they're bringing someone on, you know, that has some authority. What's the last, what's the last channel? Uh, podcasting, right? So guesting Huge. and hosting. So guesting, monetizing the interview. It's like, great. I've, I've been a guest on a podcast. Yeah. But you, do you know the four steps to truly monetize that experience mm -hmm. or do you just kind of let four it go? Four steps, four <laughs> steps to monetizing that. Yeah. Yeah. And then hosting and then truly understanding you know, what is podcasting made up of in terms of the, the demographics that are out there? They're over 60%. We just had our session today. So it's top of my mind. <laughs> over 60% have a graduate level degree who are podcast listeners. Wow. All right. Yeah. And so it's a very educated audience podcasting as well. So that's the fourth pillar. But when you add all that up, video, social media, media attention, TV, radio, and then podcasting, that is the marketing plan for years. Like this you stuff isn't going away. Broadcasting your brilliance, you know, Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. and it is rinse and repeat. What you teach, what we teach is one of those things that your toolbox is full now and you don't have to go back and relearn. You might need to practice, right? But you have those tools now that are, like you said, it's lifetime ROI for your business when you learn these channels and you understand them and then you implement them, right? Strategy always wins. And that's coming from a very visionary entrepreneur who did not always embrace strategy. I have found, right? We have found as actually a team and a company, how much strategy has affected our bottom line, really. Yeah. 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 And I want to end with this because you, you brought it up around, you know, people find us, they find us on YouTube, they find entrepreneurs on YouTube, they find us on your Facebook lives or your Instagram lives. But I can attest that at the network level, we built shows around talent. All right. When we found someone out nationally, who was like, amazing, really energetic, not fake, but authentic, yeah. Those are the people that the networks and the executive producers are snatching up. They are looking on social and YouTube channels for very authentic individuals. And we've got one in the group. She's like, I, I built my YouTube channel. I have monetized it, but I want to get to the network level. I said, great, just follow direction, <laughs> right? Yeah. But so you may say, well, I may not want to be at the network level, but it's truly being you people fall in love with you, the entrepreneur, the person who wants to help us in front of the camera. Yes. And if it's not the network, then let it be your client or your buyer or follower Yeah. and, and be you. So such great advice, Elizabeth. Thanks for joining me on the show today. You know, I adore you. I'm so grateful that you are part of this team. The work that you do with our clients really creates breakthroughs that change lives. And, you know, I know we all believe that, you know, when you're plugged into that zone of genius, when you're sharing a message that you're passionate about and you're doing good in the world and you're making money, that is inspired living. Would you say? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I mean, I, I think, you know, this, I root for our clients every day. It's like, yes, they got yeah, on I camera. Do. Yes. They nailed the live. Yes. They're consistently on social media using their hashtag and keywords. <laughs> right? And it's such a joy to watch the transformation that happens of someone who's starting like this and they're so nervous and they're not using their hands and they're talking like this to someone who is like, yeah, I'm real. Yeah. So satisfying. I so it's appreciate so you, Carrie. Thank you so much. Aww. You are welcome. Now, if you would like more information on what we've been talking about this whole show, which is broadcast your brilliance, we recommend you come join our Facebook group called Ignite Your It Factor, where we hold a masterclass 
all around video and we will explain more about broadcast your brilliance you can also just always reach out to us either online or through dms to schedule a free call with the team and really talk about where you're at in your business where you're at with your message and see if joining broadcast your brilliance would be right for you so i encourage you to do that again go to ignite your it factor on facebook or just reach out to us to book a free consultation elizabeth i love you i appreciate you thank you for being the mama bear that helps people really understand their message and make the impact they're here to make on the planet i appreciate you and I'll talk to you soon thank you thank you so much You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.